Here is um, a virtual pathology specimen showing a finger which is cut in longitudinal section. I'm just going to rotate it for you to show you the skin surface here. You can see the fingernail on top. And then here we come back to the cut surface. Now let's take a closer look at what is actually happening. Um, if you pay attention to the soft tissues, particularly here in the palmar aspect of the finger, you can see that there are lots of these irregular, well-defined, chalky, whitish deposits. And in fact, some of them are actually encroaching upon the bones of the phalanges, as you can see. And if you look closely enough, you can just about make out some of the deposits within the periosteum, which is markedly thickened. So these deposits are gouty tophi, and they are composed of monosodium urate. The diagnosis here, therefore, is chronic tophaceous gout. Now let's look at some of the clinical manifestations of gout and we can think about it in terms of the acute phase as well as the chronic phase. So acutely, whether these crystals are in the joint spaces or in the soft tissues, they would incite a very marked acute inflammatory reaction. So the patient would experience the signs of acute inflammation as you can see here, redness, warmth, pain, swelling and of course loss of function. And clinically what the doctors would do is that especially if there is a joint uh, effusion because of acute gouty arthritis, usually there will be a lot of fluid in the joint space which they will aspirate with a needle and send it to the pathologist for examination. So what are we actually looking for? is that we look under polarized light microscopy, which is why you can see that the whole background here is dark. We're looking for these needle-shaped crystals. These are all uric acid crystals. And if you use a special filter, we can actually see that they are negatively birefringent. So this clinches the diagnosis of gout. In addition, we will also often see lots and lots of neutrophils because of the inflammatory response. And it's important to examine the fluid under the microscope so that we can distinguish between an acute gouty attack versus septic arthritis. Now moving on to the chronic clinical picture, there can be chronic uh, arthritis, um, loss of function as well as deformity due to the actual uh, tophi. In addition, we must also remember that because gout is essentially a systemic disease, this can also result in deposits in other organs, for example in the kidney, and the resulting diseases would be called urate nephropathy. This can result in uric acid stones, renal stones, which can have uh, clinical signs of very painful colic and also eventually can lead to renal failure. So just to complete the picture, it would be good if you were to revise and uh, look up what are the clinical predisposing conditions to a developing gout.